Do you think India suffered? Do you think India is in a worse place now than it would have been if it was never colonized by the British? For the calves groomings, heads up men's hair paste, which also happens to be the best hair paste in this country. Dig deep into the roots, scalp and the hair. Yes, heads up is indeed scalp friendly. So no shying, maximum styling. Alright, so this video is going to unfold in two parts. Part one where I discuss, rather where I share my fair opinions on why I think and rotate is a problem to my countrymen. And part two where I discuss the good, the actual good, the apparent blessing that Andrew Tate is to a select few men in my society. So depending on whenever you're watching this video, I'll recommend you head over to my channel and watch the other part as well. Because gentlemen, like it or not, but every man has his strength and weaknesses. Every content creator has its positives and flaws. Hell, who am I kidding? Even I do. The only difference, I'm not delusional. The only difference, I'm just a tad bit more self-aware. Anyway, in case you're Indian or not even from the Indian subcontinent, somebody from the Desi culture and somebody who is deeply invested in his personal growth, I would sincerely, I would honestly want you to watch both these videos as these two videos are going to 10x your personal growth to a whole new level. Cool? All right then, let's get into it. Gentlemen, my name is Mayank Bhattacharya. This is Life Essentials. Let's roll. So you see, there are three specific things that I find problematic in Andrew Tate's content. And if you as a young man could be made aware of it, if you as his audience could be made aware of it, then I know it for a fact that it'll only 10x your personal transformation process. So the first thing which is relatively easier to cover is his money making schemes or the get rich quick path that he chooses to preach. You see, Mr. Andrew Tate made his money running a pornographic webcam business model. Sure, he was a fighter, a champion fighter collection, but that didn't make him any money. <laughs> Gentlemen, professional fighting will only pay you when you are actually in the top G leagues and you are the top G of those leagues. So in short, if you are not Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey or Habib, forget making any money fighting professionally. That too, about a decade ago when Mr. Tate used to fight professionally. So now he didn't make any money fighting. He didn't get rich fighting. He made his money duping young, insecure and dumb boys into a pornographic webcam business model. Now honestly speaking, personally speaking, I don't have any problem in him being an online pimp. That was a profession he chose and he sure as hell worked hard at it. But there is this other problem. You see, I come from a country rich in culture. I come from a country that literally invented Kama Sutra as a thing to the West. There were courtesans who were actually the member of state back in my olden days. Member of state could mean congressman for all you Americans and member of parliament for all you Britishers and my Desi folks. So yes, we have had courtesans. In other words, we have had high class escorts who were actually a part of the governor of a state or a region for that matter. We have had temples, we have had books, we have had texts. We have had a fair share of history related to free and liberal sex. But the difference then and the difference now is the fact that what was practiced by highly affluent men, highly affluent group of people is now being preached on to some real insecure folks who don't even need to or who don't even aspire to live that lifestyle. A young and dumb 16 year old boy or a 35 year old virgin spending his money and time rather wasting his money and time on an online model where he is getting some fake emotional support or some fake sexual liberty is not even liberty or freedom at the very first place. Gentlemen, this is where my problem lies. This is what concerns me on the macro because this to me is an ethical problem. Now, I don't know who was Andrew Tate's clientele back then, but I'm pretty sure they were young and broke boys. They were young and virgin boys or they were young and unavailable men who were not told to work on themselves, who were not told to get better and go out and actually have a serious, genuine relationship with the opposite sex, but they were rather forced or lured into spending their money and time in some stupid, dumb internet. Thing. And to me, as an ongoing aspiring creative entrepreneur, this is a problem because I don't think Andrew Tate ever in his life used these services. I don't think Andrew Tate ever in his life thought the need of these services. But preying on someone's insecurities to make you rich and famous and then you try to show it off to the people around, 
I don't sit well with that idea. It just doesn't make much sense. So no, this version of getting rich quick is not what I want in my country. You see, we have already had a terrible past of corruption, loot and whatnot by all types of invaders and governments. This is the last thing that I would want to have in my country going forward. Different ways to con people, different ways to lure in securities and different ways to make money just because you are supposed to get rich, just because rich is valued the most. That's not what I would want in my country, not among my countrymen. You see, getting rich is very important. For a man to work hard, for a man to find his purpose and for a man to be useful to the society in order to give some value and get some value back in terms of wealth and prosperity is the least that we can expect, is the least a man must do as his fundamental duty but don't do it by conning people don't do it by some illegal unethical means gentlemen the one thing that is a whole lot more important than getting rich is the way you get rich at the very first place i am a chanakya guy i like being rich i like money i like the things i can do with money i like the number of people i can help with money but i'll never want to do it the wrong way and i'll never let anyone preach their wrong methods in my country their way but gentlemen all this or the whole idea of accumulation of wealth well it takes time it takes hours it takes a lot of you toiling your ass and getting things done and irrespective of that irrespective of all the hours you put in all the intellect and all the genius you use to grow yourself to be a richer man there'll always be someone who will be richer than you it's just the way it is there is always a finite source of money in this planet and there'll always be someone who'll have it more than you it's just how things work. So no, Andrew Tate is not the world's richest man. You and I know it. Even he knows it very well. I don't forget the world. His net worth does not even compete with the 0. Point, top 0. 0.1 or top 1% of my city called Mumbai, let alone the United States or the world in general. So it's not the money that makes him attractive. It's not the money that makes him charismatic. It's not the money that is making him famous. It is a whole lot of things. It's a package of his fitness, his charm, his charisma, his sense of humor, his way of communication and the way he carries himself as a man in today's day and age. This, all of this combined along with the money he made, however he made, that is the combination of all that Andrew Tate is, which makes him a lot more attractive than a man who is probably hundredfolds more richer than him. So no, it's not just this money making or get rich quick thing, it's a package of a lot. Money in this case, is just a bonus, it's just an edge and add on. So preaching this idea that you own a Bugatti, if you don't own a Bugatti then you are a freaking loser is not a very holy idea to have. I can go out and find 100 more men who are making 100 times more marine than Andrew Tate in every given minute. I can go out and find 100 more men who are a lot more charismatic, who speak a lot better, who has a much bigger influence than Andrew Tate in general. So selling this solo narrative of get rich quick or become rich or have a Bugatti otherwise you are a sore loser is quite problematic to that society and to my society as well. However, his work ethic, his charm and his genius that he has used to capitalize and make money will be discussed in detail in the part 2 of this video. But my sole problem here is that this man is trying to teach an unrealistic hollow life which is not going to fulfill any man at any given point whatsoever. If you are old and wise and if you really aspire to be the top G, you'll probably start looking at Andrew Tate a lot more objectively you'll probably start looking at what he does and not what he tells or preaches usually but if you are someone young if you are someone who is not that old and wise if you are someone who has zero experience in the real world altogether then you'll probably be inspired you'll probably be influenced and you'll probably end up doing a lot of dumb things in the process as well by listening to the top G. gentlemen that's where your age and you getting your hands dirty come into play watch what he does not what he says of creatures. You see, I'm a 30 year old man and I do not own a Bugatti. But what I do own is a lot of self and social awareness. So whenever I do end up making that Bugatti money, which I will, I'll probably never buy a Bugatti living in this country because my country is not Bugatti friendly. The roads and the geographical region where my country is at, I'll probably end up buying a Mercedes Benz, Indian built, Indian assembled. AMG. That'll be a whole lot more practical and that's a different topic to talk about altogether. But the point being, more awareness and less Bugatti. Especially when it comes down to a man's mental health and psychology. You see, I'm a rare breed. I like to call myself a men's lifestyle scientist. So no, I cannot expect and I do not expect most men to be this objective of such masters. And that is exactly why I have a problem. Because in case you did not know, my country is still a work in progress. Similarly, the countrymen living in my country are still a work in progress. Progress in regards to poverty, 
industrialization, equality, gender equality, equal pay, labor laws and a whole bunch of things. Apparently we weren't always like this. We weren't always this compromised at the civilization. But we are now. So we are working our way out. And in this process we are also rewriting our country's new history. Again different topic for a different day but the point being progress. You see the western economics or the western economies have literally shaped the western civilization as we see it in today's day and age. And when money is valued the most, when money is the torch bearer then everything becomes a fair play. And this thought, this idea, this approach that money is the torch bearer and everything is a fair play sooner than later starts translating not only in the money making process but in the society as a whole. Yes, it starts bleeding into spaces then you and I cannot hold. So in a culture that is driven by money with zero accountability, responsibility or value, it becomes really very difficult to differentiate between the right and the wrong. So in that society, in that civilization or in that spectrum of life, it is a lot more common to see excessive abuse of everything that has got to do with money, fame or vanity. Yes, things as simple as steroids, silicon, drugs, even OnlyFans, prostitution and calling people to make money for that matter. I mean honestly speaking, I wouldn't even consider calling these 18, 19 year olds adults because clearly they are not. Now as of filming this, as of taping this, thankfully my country still has some sense of accountability and some sense of shame attached to it as well. Now I'm not really a fan of this shaming culture. I have this Vivekananda tattoo on my left shoulder which says that anything that negates you, anything that weakens you, you should abandon it and thrash it out of your life. So no, I'm not really a fan of this shaming culture but what I am a fan of is awareness and accountability. So yes, thankfully the ratio of young and dumb influences in my country is still fairly less. The guys who actually get famous and rich in my country doing this as a full time job or doing anything as a full time job do have some talent associated with it. At least in today's day and age they might be entitled, they might be privileged, that's a different topic but they do have some talent associated with it. That's the beauty of market economy, that's the beauty of Chanakya Niti. So yes, if you don't keep a check on this, if you don't be aware of it, I'll not be surprised seeing a 16 year old living in Mumbai doing the same thing that someone in LA is doing at today's TNS. I do not want this, I do not want to weaken the men of my society. Post independence, my country, my countrymen rather has benefited from two things very greatly. Free market economy of 1992 and the advent of cheaper internet services post the 4G liberalization. That has probably opened doors that I haven't even thought could be opened in this country and I'm so very happy and proud about it. But if we also follow the footsteps of the West wholeheartedly, we'll end up becoming a nation that puts money at the forefront and nothing else otherwise. And in a state or in a society where there is no awareness, where there is no accountability, when money is the task bearer, you'll probably see a lot of men duping the other men in terms of insecurities and you'll see a lot of women sleeping around and slutting her way out because money is their priced key. So no, I do not want a con man, I do not want a woman selling her damn body. And the only way I can do my bit to make my countrymen be aware of it is by bringing in the awareness through this content and by raising some accountability through the culture in which we exist. You see, we are still a very conservative society and some cultural and liberal reforms are needed every walking minute, every walking day. There is no denying the fact and I cannot, cannot, cannot stress its importance more than ever. Our norms, rituals and way of life has always evolved with the current age and time and I think we should keep doing it at a little more speedier rate than usual. And I think that's the very reason we need to find an endic version of a desi version of masculinity and feminism. We need a movement and we need that movement right now. Not a replica of the West, not a replica of something that we have had in the past but a mix of something that is relatable and that is valid for today's age and society. A movement that is probably even inspired by the West and our own philosophies. A movement that is probably inspired by the West and our Desi thought leaders as we had them already. A movement for men which is inspired by Vivekananda, Shivaji, Bose, Ravindranath Tagore and many such actual empowering men. A movement for ladies inspired by Rani Lakshmi Bai, Dr. Anandi Bai Joshi, Saina Nehwal, PV Sindhu and all these great women that we have had in our society. All these men and women are the great examples of Indic masculinity and Indic feminism. None of this, none of these men and none of these women would have existed had it not been for our version of masculinity 
and feminism. So, in a society, in a country that has just rediscovered its meaning of masculinity and feminism, in a society which is still fighting hard to reform some of the old conservative thoughts that are typecasted to men and women, I do not want a foreigner, I do not want someone from the West influence my countrymen with the thought that we are not ready for or we should never be ready for at any given point in time. Andrew Tate's version of masculinity is not perfect. When will you, a well-read man who's watching this video in English, realize the fact that West is not right all the time? Andrew Tate's version of masculinity is just a response to the West's version of feminism at the very first place. Gentlemen, they started it for a very right reason. They started the revolt for a very right reason. It was a very important revolution that the Western women needed in their society. But then things got a little too far and Andrew Tate became a polarizing agent. I do not want this polarization to ever happen in my country at the very first place. We need them both, but we need them in our own terms, in our own definition, with our own way of life that we live in. Patriarchy is beautiful, gentlemen. So Sebastian Derose was a patriarch. Matriarchy is beautiful, gentlemen. Rani Lakshmi Bai was a matriarch. They both fought, bled, and died for my country. They both led, and they didn't lead by force. They led by being the sheer examples that they could be. We need these versions and we need these versions more than ever right now. In case you're someone who watches Hindi YouTube channels, I'll recommend you two easy examples to look up to. Gaurav Taneja and his wife Ritu Taneja. Both of them are commercial pilots, both of them are really very successful. But if you have to look up to a man who is not really toxic, who is actually a wholehearted man who leads by being an example and his wife. Mrs. Ritu Taneja, who is also a very accomplished woman, from the city and the place that she comes in, you should totally hear her story, the amount of struggle that she had to go through to become the pilot that she is. That's the empowerment I speak of, that's the hustle, that's the work ethic I would want every man in my country to have and every woman in my country to dream of. Not the one that the West preaches, not the one that the Andrew Tate is preaching, not the one that even the American women are trying to foster on my women on the women of my country. Sadly, in today's day and age, the Western men aren't men anymore. And I'm seeing that problem happening with my country men as well. Men aren't ambitious. Men aren't willing to work hard. Men aren't willing to toil. Men don't have purpose. Men don't have vision. Men don't have any goals whatsoever. And the same sorry, sad story for all the women as well. This is not affecting the entire country as a whole, but a small section of people who are very entitled, very privileged, English speaking folks and whatnot. I see this problem peeping into them. And as long as I'm alive, as long as I'm kicking, as long as I'm able to do my job, I'll keep reminding you motherfuckers, I'll keep pushing your button for you to get out and do it. You see, freedom isn't given. Freedom is something you have fight for. Freedom was something that we have fought for. Apparently, the United States of America, being 250 years old country, they have forgotten the fight for freedom. We are still very new. Our forefathers have bled for this country where you live and do what you do. I dare you let this freedom go to waste. I dare you let this entitled privileged life that you have got by somebody dying in your family go to absolute waste. Enough of your complacency. Enough of you being a lazy man. I dare you waste your freedom, my friend, by being an incompetent man. And to Mr. Andrew Tate, in case you're watching this, which I highly doubt you will, but in case you are, I see you. I know you. I probably know you a lot better than you know yourself. And no, this is not arrogance or some cocky deluded confidence. This is just my job. This is what I do and this is what I have been sent in this world to be aware of. So yes, I see you. I see the good that you are and I see the problem that you could be to my countrymen. Come back next week when I'll talk about the good, the blessing that you can actually be, that you actually are even, to a small minority of the countrymen in my society. Only if they get the context right, only if they are Aware, right. And to all you remaining handsome men watching this video, in case you want to take yourself seriously and if you want to really work on your confidence and become that man that you deserve to be, become that man that you ought to be in today's day and age in my country, do not forget to check out two very simple things. One, our apparel line, TMB Basics. We make shirts, shoes, t-shirts, everything to empower your confidence and to empower your worthiness as a strong, confident man. And two, to further empower your confidence, to further empower your existence as a man, we have just launched our grooming company called Cavs Grooming. This is a men's only grooming company designed and formulated to empower men with their mighty 
warrior hairstyles. In case you haven't, you can check them out at www.capsgrooming.com or at tmbbasics.com. Dress up, stay strong, and stay stylish, gentlemen. This is going to be a fun ride. Jai Hind, take care.